Good evening everybody. Thank you very much for joining in. Uh, this is a very new kind of video which we are making this time and uh, from this side I am Rahul Magan. I am working as a chief executive officer of uh, my own startup which is Strategy Consulting LLP and at the same time I am acting as a country director for two international forums which you can easily see on the website which is International Institute of Certified Forensics Investigation Professionals and Associate of, of Association of Certified Forensic Investigation Professionals. ACFAP. Besides that, uh, our company has already had four collaborations in international space, including these two, uh, which is first and second, and two we already uh, two which is in uh, one in Europe, and uh, one we did with Singapore, which is WBR, which is Worldwide Business Research. Now today we are going to certainly speak about a very important topic, and as you all understand that uh, sitting today, which is 29th of July 2016, the markets are getting highly volatile. Every second day, there are a lot of changes happening in the currency. Things are moving here and there. You all heard of that. Uh, now, Bank of Japan is coming up with the, the helicopter money, which is also not, not a good solution. From the from the so many years that uh, they are doing the almost two decades, they are doing the quantity easing, and this has not come up with a very good result. But now they wanted to do the quantity easing. Now they wanted to go ahead with the helicopter money. So today we talk about mitigating FX risk in the corporate portfolio, which is nothing but mitigating foreign exchange risk in the corporate portfolio. And this side Rahul here. So what do you mean by mitigating FX risk in corporate portfolio? What do you mean by foreign exchange risk? Now foreign exchange risk is turning out to be the biggest risk for all corporates across the globe. We all understand that. As majority of the corporates are getting globalized in nature, as more and more corporates are getting globalized, henceforth the, they move towards exposure, which is known as the foreign exchange risk. Now, foreign exchange risk exposure, which we certainly see here, is divided into two parts. What is balance sheet impact? What is the PNL impact? The balance sheet impact goes in the OCI. OCI stands for other comprehensive income, which impacts your equity. On the other hand, PNL impact goes in your uh, either debit side or the credit side. And PNL impact would, would be once you don't do your hedge accounting or you are highly ineffective in nature when you do the hedge accounting or you don't do the hedge accounting. Moving this, you can very well see that uh, what are the various kind of instruments the companies are taking. You would have uh, forward, futures, debt, currency swaps, interest rate swap, derivatives and there are a lot of things which you are doing, which corporates are taking. Now one thing which we certainly need to clarify here very carefully to all, all our users is that forward contract is not a derivative instrument. Please note that unfortunately there are many people across the globe who continue to saying that forward contract is also a derivative but certainly this is not the case. This is technically wrong. Forward contract is not a derivative instrument. That is something which we sincerely need to understand. Now here there are two import three important exposures the company is having in its books. One is known as transaction exposure, translation and economic exposure. Economic exposure sometimes is also known as also known as accounting exposure. Transition exposure refers to the you know cash flow hedges. Translation exposure cannot be hedged because there is no accounting standard which is permitting you to hedge the translation exposure. On the other hand, economic exposure refers to an accounting exposure. Now, if we add all three, this is A, this is B, and this is C, we end up having which is known as exposure triangle, which you can see here very, very, very carefully. Right now, foreign exchange risk translation transaction or operating now translation goes in your other comprehensive income because other comprehensive income includes two expect number one the derivative hedge the, the derivative gains and loss and other is your effective part of your hedge accounting so all the effective part of your hedge accounting will go in the other comprehensive income on the other hand non non effective part in your hedge accounting will go in your uh, in your pnl and it may go on the debit side, it may go on the on the, on the credit side, but uh, majority it will go on the debit side. It depends, to be honest, but generally it go on the debit side. Now moving ahead, you understand the translation exposure, but it's our duty to explain you. What do you mean by translation exposure? Translation refers to conversion of foreign currency into local currency. Take a simple example of Infosys. Infosys is an Indian company based out in India. Now Infosys foreign Infosys Infosys local currency is what Infosys functional currency is INR. On the other hand, what is Infosys is consolidation. Consolidation means closing the books in dollar terms. Now Infosys functional currency is INR. On the other hand, consolidation happens in dollar terms. 
So what would be the game? The game is that the game is that Infosys need to convert its INR denominated uh, financials, which is cash flow, PNL, balance sheet into dollar denominated. And here comes the exchange gain loss. Because take a very simple example. In January, it is going to be 66. In February, it is going to be say 65 and that. Now here, let us take an example here in that regards. Now please, by the time this uh, this is coming, please note that uh, Infosys is, is, an, is, is always a net exporter. It is not always an importer. Now I am making two charts here. I am writing months. I am writing USD INR rates. Okay, I am writing months here. I am writing USD INR rates. Here I am saying January. Here I am saying February. Here we are saying March. Here we are saying April. Here we are saying May. Here we are saying June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Now assume that here the rate was 66. We are assuming the rate was 66. And in this, and here we, because in uh, foreign currency, you have to show in the after 4 decimal. Suppose here 66.50. As the rupees start depreciating, the translation you would have a translation loss. Because suppose here you are having suppose you are having local currency assets. I'm I'm simply using local currency assets. Suppose you are having local currency assets as uh, 1 million. That is why I refer 10 raised to the power 6. You are having 1 million. So how much would be the foreign currency assets? What I am using? I am using the round formula. I am saying round this divided by this comma minus 3. So it will do the round. Yeah, here take it as minus 1. Now you can see very well the difference. As I start depreciating, it will turn out to be uh, uh, you are you would face the translation loss. I'll now this time 6650, I will take it 67. Now you can very well see how the things are moving. Now I will take 6750. It will start now. I will take uh, 68. It will fell down. I will take 68.50. It will more fell down. I will say 69. Then I'll say last 69.50. So translation loss is increase. Translation is decreasing as the rupee depreciating. Translation would decrease. Translation would decrease. Now, now we, we we make a method. Now we will reduce. It by 0.5 now you will see it will start increasing now for a demo let's say it is not 0.5 let's say it is 0.75 now see it's back to 500 so as the rupee is appreciate is depreciating here which I'm mentioning at a color using this then you would be having you would be having translation loss and here once rupees start appreciating what you would have you would have a translation gain you can very well see here this is translation loss and this is your translation gain okay now back to business you understand translation transaction we will do via cash flow hedges transaction we will do via cash flow hedges now accounting wise we know that uh, exposures can be current exposure non current exposure you know you have that there are four methods of doing translation current and non current method monetary and non monetary better 
method, temporal method, and current trade method. These are the four methods to which you, you can do the uh, your translation. Now here comes the main which is transaction exposure which is also known as cash flow hedging. Now before moving higher let me explain you what do you mean by cash flow hedging. Cash flow hedging is nothing but a phenomenon through which you hedge your exposure trying to protect from the volatility in the interest uh, volatility in the exchange rate market. So take a very simple example. You are Infosys, you have clients sitting across the globe. Now your clients are billing in dollars. On the other hand, your cost is in INR because the people who are serving these clients are somewhere in India. Anywhere, Bangalore, Mumbai, Noida, Gurgaon, wherever. Now the salaries and the other operating cost is in INR. On the other hand, the receivable which is coming in dollars. Now this receivable is also known as foreign currency receivable, right? Now to protect the volatility of, of the exchange rate, on this receivables is known as cash flow hedging. So take a simple example. If Infosys don't do a hedging program, if Infosys don't do a hedging program, then Infosys would lose. How Infosys would lose? Infosys would uh, Infosys would lose. Infosys would, would basically one suppose when they get dollar, this would be the scene. See the volatility. This would be the scene with with the Infosys. Now if INR would be 66 they would get now this is let us let me explain you here now this i would uh, refer this as now this was translation impact now I will create the similar situation of revaluation impact. Now suppose I copy this here and what I do I will make few changes. I will do home I will do revaluation impact. I will assume the same rates we have here but this time I, I, I would assume foreign currency receivables. Now these are the my foreign currency receivable. I'm assuming I'm getting a million dollar every month. Okay. Now how much would be the local currency assets in that sense? Local currency assets would be this into this. That is pretty much clear. That is. Now what is the impact? If you don't hedge, if you don't hedge position, but what would be the impact? impact is very simple you would say this minus this divided by this you would compute this a control d and you will say in percentage you can very well see the impact if you don't hedge then the impact would be this although you continue to get the foreign currency receivable but this is the local currency asset which is this f2 you would continue to have a have that impact which is f2 right you would continue to have that impact on the game uh, i can explore that screen as well so that viewers can see very well this is this would be the impact so the first we talked about uh, translation impact then we talked about the revaluation impact on that now back to business back to business now in this what are the various cash flows? Now, how do you take the cash flow hedging? Cash flow hedging can be done at two parts. Number one, like you can very well see that cash flow hedging impact goes in the PL. Let me clarify here again. Cash flow hedging impact would always go in PL here. So if first of all you need to measure the hedge accounting for the cash flow hedging. And what do you mean by hedge accounting and all? You can refer our video which is already there on our channel. What is a hedge accounting and all? But in the interest of time, I can simply tell that if it is effective, then it will go in OCI. OCI stands for other comprehensive income. If it is go, if it is ineffective. It will come in PNL, which will hit the either debit side of the PNL or the credit side of the of the PNL. 
second comes and cash flow hedging can be done in any of the currencies i am writing here cash flow hedging can be done in usd inr it can be done in G gbp dollar it can be come in euro dollar it can be come in aussie dollar it can be come in new zealand dollar it can be come in japanese yen it can come in canadian dollars and any currency any currency you can have a cash flow hedging let me write here this is now second comes the fair value hedging now check it out but fair value hedging stands out fair value hedging you have a balance sheet and and let me explore the font you have a balance sheet in which you have an asset side you have liability side now asset side which you are having you would have current assets and you would have non current asset here you you would have current liability and here you would have non current liability now revaluation is not the fair value hedging is the the accounting there are a lot of accounting standards who are misnomerly still referred this as uh, basically balance sheet hedging but fair value hedging is nothing fair value hedging is nothing but the hedge of the impact on the on all asset and liabilities which are subject to revaluation now we have taken an example of infosys now infosys would have lot of foreign currency assets and lot of foreign currency liabilities which are subject to receivable it may possible that these are current assets this may possible these would be non current asset it may possible this is current liability this may possible this is a non current liability but at the end you need to consider this in your exposure this is fair value hedging fair value hedging also known as accounting exposure results from the way of accounting convention dictates that company foreign assets and liability should be booked example if intel assets in ireland are regarded as denominated in irish funds then the subsidiary accounting value is exported to the fund and the firm may wish to hedge the financing because intel is basically an american company you would hedge dollar to irish funds but generally now you will hedging dollar to euro right now in this you can see fair value hedging can be done using two ways one is onshore exposure one is offshore exposure now what do you mean by onshore exposure onshore exposure means or onshore markets i am not here talking about on side and off side because the general perception on the on side and off side is that on side means something which is where you are off side means you know uh, exactly uh, outside here you have several onshore treasury markets across the globe like if you see carefully you are having uh, singapore malaysia now if you see here you have singapore new york hong kong australian markets which are acting as an onshore market when it comes to offshore markets you are you are acting as a you are acting as a domestic market right so fair value hedging can be done using any place this is onshore and offshore when you are doing the fair value hedging here when you are doing the fair value hedging here then this is known as non deliverable forward hedging because this can only be done using non deliverable contract because singapore cannot take a deliverable dollar inr on the other hand this country can take a deliverable inr this country can only do non deliverable inr henceforth you are doing non deliverable forward contracts you can refer our video there are a lot of videos uh, pertaining to the non deliverable contracts and their respective derivative contract respective derivative now you can see the economic exposure which is unexpected changes cost of hedges and all and all economic exposure is how the firm revenue and cost will be respond to the exchange rate we have saw cash flow hedging and fair value hedging in that regard so this was all about the foreign exchange hedging program which uh, we uh, which we wanted to take you through in nutshell we would like to explain you that foreign exchange is getting very complicated markets are getting very very complicated things are shifting up things are changing up 
who knows what would happen like our next video which will be on the on the foreign currency we will introduce you to the how indonesian rupee is turning out to be a uh, basically a uh, uh, carry currency this would again be a more complicated video because there are a lot of carry currencies which are currently across the globe and indonesian rupee is turning out to be a turning out to be a carry turning out to be a carry turning out to be a a, a carry currency and last but not least you can very well say that these are the various uh, offshore treasury markets offshore treasury markets uh, the last offshore uh, let me guide you that as well you can hedge your interest rate exposure because we talked about currency till then you can hedge your interest rate exposure using principal only swap coupon only swap with if you total add you can have cross currency interest rate swap if you wanted to hedge your exposure in local books pertaining to local currency then there is only one which is known as overnight index swap so this principal only swap coupon only swap and cross currency interest rate swap this is some of both and this overnight index swap is that please note carefully that overnight index swaps it links with my board like you have libor but don't don't uh, it's uh, but don't make an assumption that with, uh, like in london you have libor similarly you have my board here no the functionality of both libor and my board differ completely when it comes to the interest rate hedging or overnight index swap refers to hedging of local currency assets and liabilities in local currency books in local country i repeat overnight index swaps refers to hedging of local currency assets and liabilities in local currency books in local country on the other hand interest rate liability you of course hedge in india but there are other various places where you can hedge OIS is the most liquid market across the globe. Sitting today, you have you name any country where you don't have the OIS. You have the OIS everywhere. Ah, uh, these are the various things uh, offshore treasury markets help you. You have the non-deliverable forward contracts. You have the G7 currency pairs. You have uh, these. These are the various uh, things they would offer you. USD, Singapore dollar, Hong Kong dollar, Chinese yuan, CNH is on onshore, offshore Chinese yuan. you would have idr indonesian rupee we are going to talk about soon you would have australian dollars and so on so forth you have vanilla and and equity exposure as well now this is how the offshore treasury market would help they would help you in institutional banking treasury markets consumer private islamic banking securities brokerage and everything offshore treasury market is growing at a very fast pace and i won't be surprised that in the upcoming time offshore treasury markets you know maybe assist you in uh, much more way then expected you would have uh, this the last but not the least you can do you can via foreign exchange uh, you can do usd ir currency volatility philippines peso ois curve usd aui jap and usd australian dollar usd chinese yuan canadian dollar japanese yen and and euro euro uh, gbp euro is a cross so in nutshell when it comes to the foreign exchange portfolio it is not very easy for corporate to manage first and foremost the corporate need to understand the kind of exposure they have whether it is a transaction exposure it is a translation exposure or revaluation exposure 99.99% companies who are who are abroad they definitely have translation translation exposure and they definitely have transaction exposure also in our uh, industry we always say that transaction exposure is nothing but cash flow exposures now if you are if you are uh, having business abroad you can say that you must be having the exposure of the fair valuation as well no doubt about that and 99.99% fair fair value ex, uh, exposures are always hedged outside india and may where in the you know the preferably is in singapore you have hong kong and uh, that you uh, we demonstrated you this which is the various uh, uh how offshore markets help you we demonstrated you how translation works this is what how translation works uh you know this is the translation impact this is the revaluation impact this is the fair value hedging impact uh, balance sheet current asset non current asset liability and non current liability you always welcome to contact us as uh, this these are our contact details you are welcome to email as treasury consulting llp@gmail.com our alternate id is rahulmagan8 at the rate gmail.com you can always call us at 9198992429278
यू आर वेलकम टू ज्वाइन आवर ब्रांड विच इज मेवरिक ट्रेडर्स विच इज ऑन लिंकड इन यूट्यूब व्हाट्सएप ट्विटर डेली मोशन आई थिंक योर टेलीग्राम फेसबुक स्काइप एवरी वे यू जस्ट नेम इट यू जस्ट नीड टू ई मेल एस यू आर यू जस्ट नीड टू एस एम एस एस योर कंप्लीट नेम योर ई मेल आई डी एंड योर फोन नंबर एंड वी विल वी विल अपडेट यू I hope you find this video very useful and in the upcoming video we would demonstrate you something more specific when it comes to the foreign exchange hedging or uh, maybe some new topic thank you very much and uh, have a good luck